Welcome and welcome back. I'm Eden and last week I went thrifting for our lampshade. This week I'm DIYing it. Okay, to figure out my measurements. I took my measure tape, measured above, that's 14 inches. I took it again, measured the bottom, that's 31. And then later I measured the length, which was about seven and a half. So that's how I got my measurements. Let me show you what I did after I got the measurement. So after I got my measurements, I knew that two inches for each petal on top would be enough because two times eight would be 16. Eight times five was gonna be enough. So <laughs> once I got that, I knew how what I needed to cut my template. That's why I got the two inches on top of my template. Where's my template at? That's why I got two inches on top of my template, nine inches down the center, and then later five inches across. pattern like this all I did was place on the fabric I traced it eight times and I cut it out so before I made my final like sizing I actually made a template out of paper to make sure it would fit so like this I came across a problem when trying to take the material off the other drum these are so old that they started to crack. So I'm hoping this material is stiff because it's pretty stiff material. If it's not stiff enough, I did buy poster board to create another drum to be able to hold the supports or I also bought some wire. So we'll see which one works. I'm gonna show you two ways to put this together. I'll show you how to start with gluing. You could glue, use a hot glue to glue the sides on or if you use a sewing machine. So I'll show you how to do the glue weight first and then I'll do the sewing machine. Uh, here we go. Okay, so I forgot to mention that I actually measured, there we go, a quarter of an inch in from the top. So I measured a quarter of an inch this way and I, where it starts to like curve down here at the bottom I measure, measure a quarter of an inch in and then I made my line across because this is where I'm going to sew. But I'm going to show you right now how to glue it together using a glue gun. So I'm making sure that my lines are on the outside right here. And you're going to, you don't need to make lines unless if you really need to. But I'm going to do that because I'm going to sew this afterwards. So all you do is you put glue on your edging. Just light up your fabric. And you put it together like this. Okay, you need to make sure you're generous with your glue when you're putting it on. So when you open it, let's see if I can put it right there. Okay, so when you open it, it should look like this but you remember you just kind of keep gluing your sides so I got my first piece down now this side right here needs to be glued so again you can see it you're gonna take your fabric line it up again like this And you're gonna glue it. Okay, 
So you saw how I first blew that part. Hopefully you kind of saw how I blew the second part. So again, this part and this part needs to be glued. So I'm opening it up like this, lining it up right here together. And actually, if you're gluing it together, maybe it will be helpful to put the lines just because you know this is going to be inside and the one without the lines is supposed to be the outer part. Or hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. Hopefully this makes sense. This is probably the hard part right here for me. So I'm starting to make a pattern. You'll continue it until you finish your eight pieces or however big you're making yours. And you keep going around. So you make sure you put the glue here. So once you glue it down, you glue it here. You just line it up. Once you glue it, you do the same here. You open it up, you put glue here, and then you put your other piece right here. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna sew mine next. It's looking. Let's see if I can scoot back a little bit. So I'm gonna try gluing it down and see how that works. I try ironing it, but I can't get this crease out. And I tried it with the some wrinkle release and a steamer. So this is how it looks. I haven't glued it down. Definitely might need some wire to help it push out a little bit. In this next upcoming video, you'll just see me putting the lamp together. So what I ended up doing was I had these stands for like two years. They're faux flowers from Dollar Tree. I ended up taking these because there's like wire. So they were pretty stiff enough to hold the lamp shape. So all I did was pull off the flowers. I used my clippers and I clipped off the plastic parts. Maybe next time I could sew the wire into the lampshade, but if you haven't, don't have a sewing machine, you could just use the hot glue gun like I did. And next time, instead of hot gluing it to the frame, I would probably use like E6000. And that's just for more aesthetic reasons, because when I look down into it, I can see the big blocks of glue, but it's actually holding up. I haven't had any problems with it. And I actually am happy how it turned out. And I think that's it. I don't know, when you guys try this at home, or if you do try it, let me know if you find a better way. <laughs> say thank you to my subscribers and if you haven't subscribed please do so and I hope to see you next time on my next do it myself adventure and just FYI I was planning to do a headboard for my next DIY but my little one decided to um, destroy my phone that I bought so that may or may not be coming out we'll see um, it wasn't as bad as when he got the glue and glued those little glass beads onto that like the DIY Isabelle um, entertainment center. Yeah, he got a hold of glue and actually glued little glue pebbles to the thing. And I found out the next day I went to go check on it. But luckily I hadn't painted it or anything like that, so I was able to chisel it off. 
and that kind of led me to that's why I use plaster to kind of hide some of those uh, little imperfections just a little bit of information right there well you guys have a good day a good week and I hope to see you next time bye